welcome to the latest installment of Conversations with Cabrera. Uh, today, uh, we're going to cover a topic that I'm really incredibly excited about, something that occupies the, the attention and the work of many of us at, at Georgia Tech. It's a central part of our strategic plan, where we've decided that we want to expand access. We're very proud to be one of the largest schools of engineering and science in, in, in the nation. And, and uh, we have taken as one of our goals to make sure that students of all kinds, many of them currently underrepresented in engineering and science programs across the country, that we want to change that. And I couldn't think of two better people to help us discuss that than two colleagues. One of them who works in, in recruiting new students, our director of undergraduate uh, admissions, Rick Clark, and a national expert in the topic of, uh, of college admissions. And uh, my colleague, Professor Manu Platt in the School of Biomedical Engineering, a, a renowned scholar, but who spends a lot of time and effort trying to inspire uh, new students who, again, have been traditionally underrepresented in places like Georgia Tech to consider careers in uh, science and engineering. Um, so uh, without any further ado, I, I want to start by asking uh, Rick. I know he's uh, particularly happy because we've had a very successful year. Um, um, so I'll let you share with us what those numbers are again, sure. uh, and, and, and maybe even pinpointed um, what is it that we have done uh, to achieve those numbers and that uh, we may need to do more of going, going forward. So, Absolutely. Right? Well, thanks for, thanks for having us today and looking forward to the conversation. You know, I am really proud of the fact that, as you said, Georgia Tech has been very committed and in the strategic plan continues to be committed to expanding access. And we've done that over the last five years. Our undergrad enrollment has grown by 1,200 students. Uh, but as you said, those students are coming from lots of different backgrounds. And this year in particular, uh, the statistics and the numbers are really exciting. As you talk about inclusive excellence and just who we're bringing into this class, uh, you know, 37% more Hispanic students in this year's class than last year. Uh, we're well over 25% more first generation students, more black students in our class. Um, and that's happening, you know, I think because of the collective effort of the community. Every single CEO yeah. that I spend time with will tell me, we just cannot do our job. Right. We cannot deliver on our mission. We cannot develop products that will appeal to everybody unless we have diverse voices at the table. So it's not just a sort of a social issue right. of, of right. fairness and equity is a very important practical sort of business business issue, driving technology, driving product design, understanding market trends and, 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 and so on. I'm in biomedical engineering, right? Um, which love the diversity. We've been 50% women for a long time out of engineering disciplines. But what we're seeing now with that large number of women engineers and even with our high schoolers and the rest um, is the way that they want to approach healthcare and women's issues, right? Um, because these young women are watching the news and you know, particularly these black women, they think about maternal, maternal health rates for black women. And these high school students are already trying to ask questions about that part because they want to improve it. And they're like, I don't want to be a doctor, but you know, something happened with my aunt or with my cousin and the doctor said this, so can we kind of ask some questions there? And that's the space that we give them of, see, you're an engineer, mm -hmm. you're a scientist, you can ask those questions and then you can go find the answers. Manu, you're a very busy man. You have an extraordinary career in a field that is incredibly demanding. You have graduate students, you have a lab to run, you have yeah. classes to teach, and yet you somehow find the time to run program engages, which I've been really blown away by. Um, but why? Why does that matter to you? Oh, why does it matter? That's a great question. Um, someone poured into me. And that's why I'm here. And it's just a part of that mission of giving back. Um, and for me, it actually makes the research and the science part that I do way more fun to actually have these great, wonderful young people around that appreciate what we've been doing, but also bring these great ideas to the lab and to what we've been doing. We started partnering with Atlanta Public Schools, where you know a number of those students um, are low socioeconomic background or the Title I schools. We go to their schools and do like science and engineering work with them during the school year to gear up the students to get ready to apply to our program. They apply their rising junior year, mm -hmm. and um, they then will be working in a lab with Georgia Tech researchers and professors and grad students and postdocs doing cutting edge research, not just cookie cutter, pull out the box and plug it in. That's such an important point. Look, we've got kids two miles away 
who have incredible talent, incredible potential, who love our city and have STEM interests, but they are going other places because they don't think, again, Georgia Tech is for them. If you look back now over even just the last four years, you know, 70% more APS students enrolling at Tech than just four years ago. One thing that I hope our alumni have heard and should be incredibly proud of is, you know, if you look back at 2016 and then what we're about to hit in 2021, so a thousand more females at Georgia Tech is as undergrads. When we hear employers talk, what they say is we need more diversity of all kinds, but definitely that female voice at the table, product creation, policy creation. And we're responding to that. Of course, getting students in solves half of the problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Then we have to retain them, make sure they're successful. What should we do as we continue to increase the, the incredible diversity of students at Georgia mm -hmm. Tech? Mm -hmm. What is it we need to do better? It's so interesting. When we started Project Engages, it was just to get these kids to go to college and go to a great college. Then as it began to go on, we said, oh, we actually now need to make sure they can graduate from college. <laughs> so we understood that they felt comfortable in the lab because we wanted to make them feel comfortable at Georgia Tech. It's their space. It's a public space. Mm -hmm. they, we, got, we crossed that barrier. But then it was when they started taking the classwork. Mm -hmm. That is where we said, oh, this is what's getting them now. And it mm -hmm. wasn't because they aren't able to do the classwork. It's all the other machinations about being a successful student. It's mm. the group work, the networking, the office hours. Mm. So now it's about shutting down those barriers between student and professor, which there's some training on the professor side that Georgia Tech has been doing to make sure the professors are open and welcoming and running inclusive classrooms. Then there's that go get it and as you give to the student. So it's about bringing down whatever perceptions they had of what their college life should look like, because mm. I'm as smart as these people, mm. and the myths that that, that, that have persisted, again, particularly for first-generation students. I think, um, you know, replicating some of the programs we've already put into place to support students. So, you know, Challenge is a good example. So Challenge is a program that brings in students, uh, often students of color, not exclusively students of color, uh, in the summer to give them a taste of what Georgia Tech is going to be like. Uh, it's an opportunity to get here, to get your feet set, to understand navigating campus and to kind of have that low cost probe before things really hit in the fall with real classes, real grades, mm -hmm. you know, and all the kind of distractions really <laughs> of, uh, of, you say that. <laughs> of college, right? Yeah. We need to think about why is challenge so special and effective? Because those grad rates, retention rates are powerful and strong and they have been. But we, we should look at that as, you know, our model for where can we replicate that? We're enrolling 80% more first-generation students than we did five years ago. I'm incredibly proud of that. We are one of the few schools in the country this year that has said we will never charge a first-generation student to apply to, to apply to college. So we're removing barriers to get kids here. And then I think hiring people and putting support and money behind, taking care of them. And there's other examples. I want to thank both of you, uh, not just for uh, being with me today and humoring me in, uh, with this <laughs> conversation, but uh, really for your leadership and for uh, what you're doing to, to drive change and, and make Georgia Tech better and, and stronger. Um, we have a lot more work to do, as we, right. we, we all realize that. Um, we still, we, we need to reach at some point parity in terms of, of gender. That means that we're, mm. we're getting the job done. Right. We need to see many, many more students of color uh, in our classrooms, in our labs, thriving. We need to strengthen our culture so that everybody truly believes and senses that they belong below here. There's a lot of work that needs to be done and it's gonna be through uh, the work of leaders like you. Um, I think kudos to everybody who's worked to get us here, but also uh, let's just uh, lock arms and, and continue the important work that lies ahead. Thank you Absolutely. both. Absolutely. Thank you.